welcome to Three Gamers in a Car, an unstructured, ram- unstructured even, rambling podcast. This is Stephen. This is Connor. And Jim. Our mysterious third host. Who has appeared. Have while Jim has appeared. Technically mentioned a few times. I can't remember how many. I don't think it matters. No, not really. So, what do we want to talk about today? We've got. Well, I, I felt that we probably want to talk about, and say as... as Jim, you're doing fish versus order at the weekend. We were just going to go. What do well, fish versus order? We what does it look he's like? Doing fish versus order. So, for reference, if anyone's not aware of it, there's a coin wars like invitational thing going on. So, basically, in Guild Ball at the moment, some of the pundits have organised this program where some coins travel the country. And in May 2019, March 2019, some, some sort of time there's going to be anyone who is holding a coin on a set date will get an invitational to this large tournament in the Midlands. It sounds like a really cool idea. Jim managed to win the coin off Martin, the pundit in Folkestone, who we went to Chaos Cards the other day. So, by right now, a coin holder. Yeah. You'll be even part of the elusive Facebook group. Ooh. I'm not sure if it's elusive. You yeah, join no, it, and no, someone no, approves no. your joining request. Oh. Connor just hasn't joined the Facebook no. group because he doesn't. <laughs> care. So what Connor failed to do was Jim won the coin off Martin, and then Connor and Jim had a game straight after. Connor decided he didn't actually want to play for the coin. Well, yeah, it's because I thought we were going to have a nice casual game. We didn't. We didn't at all. But I thought, as it was a season four release event, it'd be fairly chill. It was exciting. Exciting it's a whole new lot of rules. So it was Morticians versus Alchemists, that one, wasn't it? It was, yeah. But say, it did end up being fairly close. I can't remember. I think it was 12, 12, 7, 12, 12, 11. 12, 12 11. 11. Oh, yeah, yeah, it was 12, 11. Yeah, so it was two goals, um, two goals a takeout and flask, or was it a goal? A goal, three takeouts. Yeah. yeah. So I ended up playing the, the footballing Alchemists that I wanted to try now. They have more tools to actually do that. It was fairly interesting. Three goals, no takeouts, barely any condition damage. I think all things considered it went fairly well. Um, so, fish versus order. Potentially, yeah. Jim is playing against a fish player. A fish player. Someone has challenged him who is coming to an event at the weekend who we believe is a fish player, or if they stated they're oh. a fish player. They've, I mean, they've stated they're a fish player, they're the ones that asked about using navs. Oh, of course, yeah, yeah. So they are a fish player, whether or not they're using fish... We're going to assume they're going to use fish against you. I assume so. So, oh, You've got to make sure that if you do play a game against them, they don't get to use the, the special sort of charity event rules, I'm assuming. Well, of course not. Because no, it's going to be an official player. coin. Well, yeah, I'm not playing in the Guild Ball event. No, so he's playing War Machine. I know. So but playing, it's still, it's still all part them. of the same event, so I'd recommend just double checking with them and then see. Uh, you might, as I say, think it was all just the same event ruling, I suppose. Well, you guys can figure that out today. There's nothing to do with. I'm just running the event. I yeah. Mean, yeah. <laughs> I'm just there for the tea yes, no. the, the, So the reason for this whole thing is basically I've been challenged. I'm fairly certain he's a fish player from what I've seen of him on places. But I've never actually played him before, and I've only played against Fish once, and that was in the Navs release event. Well, but the team I'm most confident with at the moment is the Order. It seems like a... And I'm trying to figure out how that whole football versus football thing actually works. So if the answer is it's a terrible plan and I should avoid it. I've never played Fish and never played against Fish to my knowledge, so... I've played against Fish a couple of times, only against Neville with... And even all that was Season 3 Yeah, and I say, moving into Season 4, they've had... I think the thing to... you've got to be aware of is, I don't know how useful Pride will actually be. They've got a lot of viable dodges or dodges on playbooks, so Mm. chances are they can charge in and just bounce off of Pride that fairly easily. That being said, if they're having to use attacks to get dodges or buy dodges in order to get around Pride's counter charge, combining that with Pride's predatory instinct, I think we actually have a fairly reasonable, like, that forcing of it. Yeah, so that's, that still make them pay one extra influence yeah. to yeah. shoot on so goal. So if, if you're, like, having to have a player who's buying where they go and then shooting on goal and that's costing them three influence... 
you're starting to look at a problem. Yeah, because that means they pretty much can only sprint where they'd go, and then yeah, well they yeah. can just. And I say if they've got four, they just spend two to charge in, guarantee the momentous dodge, dodge off, spend two of the momentum to shoot. I say this, this is then again, that's always how I think about it with Pride. I've never had a problem with him particularly, apart from that game that we played where I rolled absolutely atrociously, needing a momentous dodge with three hits on a three well, that's run. The thing and, uh, is, because uh, of how far <laughs> back Pride is, if you're relying on bouncing off of him specifically then I think I can actually, especially if I'm running both Benediction and Fangtooth, which doesn't strike me as a terrible idea in this matchup, I can actually, I think, flex some, like, you can't get out of this scrum against certain players. I think as well, against Benediction and Fangtooth, with Pride being there, you're not going to be able to charge, bounce off someone and shoot. Because you're going to, well, you will, well, no, you won't, because you'll have four armor on Benediction. And you'll probably end up defensive stancing and then using poised anybody. Yeah. And then you'll have resilience on Fang 2. Obviously, this, you know, assuming these things haven't been triggered earlier in the turn. And then Pride costs two for them to shoot on the goal. Yeah. I think fish are slippery enough that they don't have to worry too much about actually just the, uh, being in the scrum, though. So that's the one thing that I'm sort of thinking about in that matchup is the case if you did want to try and bog them down how effective would it actually be again I, I'm assuming they've got lots of dodges so they can just sort of go and leave but then again I've never played against them in an actual match I've only looked at their cards so so I think potentially the key parts of it are Jim should be able to beat them down with people like Benny and Fangtooth yeah I think depending on who else Forms part of that. I think. I think the correct lineup is normally going to be Benny, Fangtooth, Harry, and Spigot. Generally speaking, I think I Grace is going to struggle in certain places, and her heal is less useful. Yeah. Um, and I feel that Mist, while like having him is very useful at getting the ball, I think. He maybe doesn't add as much to the lineup as Harry does if I'm going for a 2 2 sort of finish. I think Harry's got, he's better on the. If you can open. So, for argument's sake, let's say one of the Fishman player comes in and scores a goal. Mm. They're probably then going to be close enough that, like, Benediction will knock them down and just farm some momentum off them. And then you've got several other characters that can just then beat them to death. Like, you know, Harry can. And, by, and in the process, put a single out or Obviously, you can use Fangtooth. Um, I think a knockdown fisherman against Fangtooth is an unhappy fisherman. So especially with the now corrected Fangtooth card, where he does have the momentous three on two, as he did before, and with single down access as well. From mm-hmm. yeah, yeah, having tack seven plus potentially two gang ups, so tack nine with Fangtooth playbook on a a knocked down fisherman model, even if they're a four zero because they were a five zero, that's still pretty nasty. Yeah. I mean even things like having pride put um what is it called? the anatomic precision precision thing on Fangtooth and then having Fangtooth just go ham on Kraken for a couple of turns. Fer- feral instincts. Feral instincts. So I just, just got the card up so I so say it's it's definitely one of those things that you can try if you do essentially have brisket and spigot sort of be dedicated goal scoring at least until you've got those two goals or when there's an opportunity to and then have the rest of the list be more fighty um, of course based on your opponent's lineup as well because and with the changes to Kraken and well I suppose the changes to Jack actually have made him worse in a, in a scrum because he's lost lost tough hide I think he used to have. Um, and again, now I think I'd say from what I saw of some brief fisherman discussions on the Gubs Facebook page, there was sort of saying actually Jack is no longer a super strong model. He's now personal preference. Yeah, he doesn't have get over here soul anymore, does he? No, and I say uh, yeah, that's over on Angel now. Yeah. Angel's got get over here soul. I think Angel win. is actually a legitimate threat to worry about because she's a very good snapshot. Mm-hmm. Sorry. Yeah. After she scores a goal. No, I don't disagree with that. I think if she puts herself in a position to be a snapshot turret, she might have some issues. She probably just dies. Yeah. As Plus, she's not. You can get. She's got dodges on playbook, but she's not actually got any viable dodges on her. 
No, but she can go up to defense six, so it's a little bit. I suppose there's depends where your knockdowns are on your models, doesn't it? So I know Benny's got some, but I don't know how low. I'm not sure if they're two or three. I know again, Harry Hat used to have some. Um, Benediction's no. knockdown is until four. Benny's is oh, until wow. four. Okay. Oh, he's got lots of pushes there. Yeah. 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 Harry's is on three attack three. Attack five. Let's say attack five. Let's say single. His singled out is on two though, so he can easily sort of skew it in his favour. Which again, I think is actually the importance of again, if you want to field Harry and be more of sort of a two-two style of team, um, is having that singled out just to make everything that much more uh, more consistent. Mm. But no, I think I think because of the team you end up running there. The fact you've got Fangtooth and Benny and Spigot, who are all two armor, and Fish don't have particularly high tax score on the majority of their players, that's where they start struggling. And I think what you can get Benny up to armor four, yeah. he can make someone immune to knockdown. I'm not sure yeah. how relevant that is against quite relevant. non Kraken, non. I mean, Corsair. yes, if they're not playing Kraken or Corsair or Jack, there might be some argument to not do it, but I think on certain turns there's definitely an argument to... Just remember that Siren, Sire Veteran Siren now has uh, reworked Dread Gaze, which does a push and a knockdown. It's yeah. a character play. Yeah, of course. So they do have a little bit more access to knockdowns than they had before, maybe? I don't really know. I, I think... Didn't play Vision Season 3, didn't play I, Vision Season 4. I think the thing to be mindful of is you have no real way of killing them all on a model in order. Not unless you're talking about a non-shark player, or a non-captain, sorry, so someone who's limited to four influence, coming in, punching Fangtooth, triggering resilience, punching Fangtooth, taking the ball, then taking a shot on the goal, but at that point they're probably both engaged by Fangtooth and got the line in the way, so and having to pay two to take the shot, so it's quite a, an expensive... That said, Shark is very good at having six influence and taking the ball and doing horrible things with it. That but said, if you're Shark... having to spend the first attack to pop resilience, and Fangtooth is never not going to be in some sort of scrum, especially if Benediction and Harry are involved. So the ability to like push him away or knock down push him, so that he's then having to spend to do things like his uh, dodge, mm. are starting to become more of an issue. I think as well that's three two inch BB models. Uh, yeah. Yeah, so. And I suppose you can slow the fish down a little bit. Has he still got Molotov on her, right? Yes. Yeah. But he doesn't have Goad, is that the thing he likes? Which is a shame, actually, because that would have been quite a nice tech piece. Excuse me, Shark, can you uh, come over here? I mean, that's the thing about Shark. If Shark scores a goal, you can just delete him because he isn't that difficult to kill. I don't think in that team, just because of the amount of damage you can pull off. Worst comes to it, Spigot can come charging in as well, and Spigot's pretty good against knockdown yeah. models. Just considering the whole two inch melee thing, though, um, just looking through the roster, Fish do have nine two inch melee players, albeit two of them are the captains, and one of them is Tentacles, so I'm not sure how favourable Tentacles will be, but it's not going to be difficult for them to just get a two inch melee team, meaning that your two inch melee benefits won't be quite as uh, or stated. Or thinking crowding out. Yeah, no, the, the benefit of running that many two inch melees isn't isn't the you can stay out of my I can stay out of your melee range. The benefit there is just the I've created this huge bubble where if you try and tag one of these players you either have to be massively off to one side or you're getting crowded out by multiple people. So I don't think that'll be that much of an issue. Especially if they have a lot of two inch melee, they can just counter it with having the crowding up oh the crowding up hanging up bonus. And also, I suppose unless you put them in like a weird triangle formation, it's not going to be that difficult to just be off to one side and not have to worry about it. So I'd just say, be be wary when you're actually positioning that. It's not going to be a sort of a, a completely safe strategy. So I think the, probably the key, assuming that it, there's no Corsair and Kraken, so you haven't got to worry too much about takeout related shenanigans, I think. Being able to get brisket and <clears throat> so being able to leverage brisket's legendary yeah. is to take an important goal when you need to and get 
Spigot into a place where he can be a snapshot turret is probably quite key to the mm. to the game. Oh no, down Spigot's the only four eight in the guild. Yes. So he's the only pick four yeah. in the guild, but that's which is quite good. But just to, so Brisket lost her minus one TN on goals, didn't she? No. No, she kept all oh, She okay. kept that. So actually she's probably quite a good snapshot it, turret as it's well. It's restricted to activation. Oh, okay. Fair enough. Um, Yay! Just, uh, she lost yeah. the uh, goal of the month. Which was for the extra screamers. Yeah. yeah screamers on everything. every doubles. Yeah. yeah. Okay. So I think it's just going to be a case of depends a lot on the actual lineups. To be honest, I think the fish probably have the advantage. Question mark. I think a lot of it may actually come down to who's kicking, who's receiving. Quite a as well. That, that was sort of what I was saying earlier about it when me and Connor were discussing it was um, if I have to kick the ball, then the plan has to be 2 2. Unless I can somehow manage to get the ball off of the fish on turn one. But then if you're receiving. Which I think at, at that point I'm basically leveraging um, Spigot's kickoff pressure. Of him already being up there, so that now he's basically threatening anyone who comes within 14 of my deployment line. Like if you're getting the ball and moving up anywhere, then he can threaten the charge and take the ball. It might be worthwhile if you are kicking and you've got sort of got that concern. It might be worthwhile kicking off with Fangtooth just so you right. have a sort of resilient two inch melee model who they have to worry about actually getting that. I know if it's Shark, he's still got the two twenty two inch sort of threat. Um, See, I, th I, th I think as well that's the issue with if you receive because Shark can still come in, take the ball and score mm -hmm. on one. Because if he kicks off, he's got the speed to just be able to charge whoever of your models comes and get, takes the ball, unless you can kick the ball well away. From Which is, is sort of probably the option there, because um, obviously Brisket and uh, Spigot have both got 8-inch kicks. Which I suppose is also the argument to potentially run Mist in there as well, is that you can move the ball away from where the fish player is expecting it to be in any given turn. Yeah. Yeah, it'll definitely be... An interesting matchup. So we've all this talk about Shark or Lapinaz, they're going to bring Corsair. I mean, if Cor he's bringing Corsair, he's, he's trying to form a scrum and forming a scrum against Benny, Harry, um, and Fangtooth is not a great idea. Well, I say with the new Kraken, though, it means that you're I'm, I'm sorry, a suitable with disadvantage. Who? Kraken. Kraken. Kraken? Yeah. Oh, dear. <laughs> um, then I say sorry. With, with the new Kraken, he is. Let's say he gravity wells you in, so your positioning is, is all over the place then, just because he forces you to be a bit all over the place. Um, you can't Sorry. attack anyone apart from him. Just just to check, gravity well is your activation, isn't it? It's your yes. advance. Yeah. It's only advance. Yeah. So it's not if he comes and engages you, he can't pull people away. No. But it's the case he's got the protective instinct, or <laughs> yeah. I guess it. so it's, it's the case you have to attack him. And he's got tough hide as well. He's only a 3-1. He's only got 20 health boxes. I say only. Only with tough hide. Yeah. yeah. But remembering that Benny doesn't really kick how much damage. He's all about pushing and yeah. knocking. Yeah, it's going to be sort of having to knock him down and then relying on Fangtooth and Spigot, really, to come in and actually deal the damage. Are there any interesting character plays you can push through Fangtooth? Uh, you mean through Benediction? Please. That's what I meant. Yeah, sorry. Um, really, honestly... Uh, options on that are fairly limited. Oh, like, you can, can you push you, Route 1 through it? No, because the target's an enemy model. We well, have yeah, yeah. he's. But he has to. His have to target for enemy model. That's oh, do that. Oh, okay. Oh, okay. So, but Grace's one is. So, uh, Grace's one is she can channel her own character plays through any one of six enemies. So, you could. So, the Lion can push Anatomical through Benny. Yeah. Brisket can push Blame Open through Benny, which is sometimes relevant. Because obviously yeah. Spigot's got a six in, an eight inch kick rather than a six inch. Yeah. Um, yeah, you've got um, Feral Instinct. You've got. Most of it, isn't it? Uh, yeah. That's not 
brain, you know. <laughs> no, not really. But I suppose it is only like a side role. So it's, yeah, I mean, it, it's just sort of there. So it's helpful for sort of slingshotting um, anatomical precision over from your goalkeeper through into the actual scrum. Yeah, I mean, that's actually very relevant, is that it means that cause the standard range of feral instinct is four inches. Okay. And Benny just has to have the caster within ten. Six rather, so it's up to ten plus a meter or ten plus a medium base, yeah. Yeah. which is significant. Certainly. Yeah, on on the guild ball pitch, yeah, definitely. Although that said, how much armor to fish have? Uh, there's a lot of characters, at least one. Yeah, yeah. Okay. I mean, if you can drop Kraken to a three zero potentially, and then get so a single out one. People like Sakana, both the captains have it. Um, okay, yeah, there's more people. One on. Well, most of them. Uh, Still fairly. Yeah, so I'll just count up how many people actually have one armor. But yeah, I think that's that's the big thing is basically if you can leverage um, the uh, seven seven options, both the captains so and just them. tentacles. So I'm not counting the navigators players in that calculation though, because they're they're not out yet. So yeah, no. But if you can if you can push enough damage through Kraken to actually remove him. Like, which is going to be tough, but at the same time it's not absurd. Yeah, and what's, and what's his speed like? Can he actually get back on the ball? Yeah. You, how effectively can he re-engage after you take him out? I guess it's more like... Oh, is this for a Kraken, sorry? Yeah, yeah. Uh, he's a 5-7 move. Really? So, oh, he's quite nippy then. Yeah, I'm going to say he's a... 2-inch melee. Speedy boy, apparently. Yeah, 2-inch melee. Has uh, he got... Uh, what was he got? Was it drag that he gained in season four? I think he had drag he before. He lost, had, released the kraken, but he, he, I think he had drag before. He did have drag before, but he, he lost, released the. Dot, dot, dot. Mm. So he got so he's got a ranged character play. Yeah. So he can get back in there if you take him out. Then he's not a. It's not a complete sort of dead weight there. It'll take him just a little bit. In fact, no, not not really, unless. Brings him on on the complete sort of opposite side of the pitch to run him back in. Then, but I think both these teams in this particular match are order and. So I think order, you have some models that scrum in the middle, but the rest sort of fan out. I say the rest. Spigot and Brisket fan out, whereas you've got the other three probably central, not necessarily like dead centre, but central. And I'll see the line back towards the goal. I think. An interesting thing is you could actually create these large, like if you, if you, for example, stick Fangtooth right in the middle, with Benny on one side and Harry on the other, you could actually create like this. What's that end up being like? Eight inch plus meat plus base sizes long line down the middle of the pitch that's just like you can't pass through here without taking parking place. Well, if you have to charge and get a dodge. Oh well, yeah, you'll have to dodge through it. At which point, either like, you're having to buy dodges just to get past it. Or you're buying a dodge to get through it and then advancing into pride. So, is this a question of... Just more points going past it. No, that's no more points. Not my genie. So, does that mean this is... Like, is this a question then of actually... You have to activate the lion first every turn to pop up? I don't think it's every turn. Tell you what, one thing that... Just to sort of make a point about the lion... With the amount of two-inch melee models in fish, the lions counter charge if they're going for a goal run, unless you've got him all the way back outside of counter charge range, then I think they're not going to have to worry that much about him. I think it's the cost of the increase in the cost of the the, the, the increased cost of kicking is actually very relevant. Mm. I I think if they're going for a goal, they're going to have the influence there, unless it becomes the situation where someone's left with the possibility of a goal that they didn't expect, like the ball scatters favourably um, on a goal kick or something like well, that. But at that point, though, like, if you're having to sink four influence onto like every striker to make them an option of scoring, then the rest of your team isn't doing anything, and I win the scrum by default. Yeah, but then they score three goals. Well, <laughs> so this, 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 this is the thing again. It's one of those ones where you... That's at least what I expect from the matchup. You have to be incredibly careful with where the influence is, where the ball is, and making sure the macro play, just keeping sort of the pitch under control, 
is arguably, I think, the most vital part of that it, matchup. It's but then entirely again, going to be a positioning matchup. Yeah, that, that's it's all going to fall down to who positions well, and to a certain extent, like you say, the way the dice fall, how favourably scatters fall on things. I think a lot of it is going to come down to skill on the positioning and luck with scatters and or poor dice roll, like dice spikes in either direction, mm-hmm. which isn't something you can necessarily plan for. You can obviously push yourself into as much a favourable position as possible, things like single down, knocking down your opponent, etc., if you want to be beating them to death. But it's really difficult to, to force something that is, for all intents and purposes, random, like the dice. You, you could have a five dice tap in that misses, for argument's sake. Sorry, Connor, I know that's uh, still a sore point. I'm not very happy right now. <laughs> so that, 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 granted, was a season three thing as well. Although actually it actually still applies yeah, to I'm season Yeah, it doesn't matter if it's a season it, three or yeah, season four. Because it was still going to be a tap-in. It would, have, it would have gone in if it was ve- season brisket. I mean... Yeah, but... <laughs> I'm never going to lift that down. No, no. That's well, a story for another day, though. Is, it's, it uh, is. Um, anyway, oh, yes, dear. no. So I think, yes, it's a very big positioning matchup, and yes, there is a lot of control I need to do to try and stop the fire. But at the same time, I think my opponent has a lot of work to stop the fire as well. Like I think, I think he has to put as much effort into trying trying to control my players as I do his. Yeah, and think... the order offers a lot of jank, which I think is where, like, the potential of the two-two victory comes in. Is just the sheer amount of it that is present. I think as well, if your opponent has a model that hasn't activated yet, or has activated, sorry, so for all intents and purposes, can't go anywhere, but he thinks he's out of threat range, and suddenly you use Brisket's legendary. Actually, you know what? I'm going to score with Brisket this term, and I'm also going to push Fang Tooth six inches closer to that model. At which point you're like, oh, oh dear. Or even like, you know, if you're hanging around near the edge of the pitch, you're like, I'm just going to push Benediction towards that model. At which point Benediction goes, yeah, I'll escort you off the pitch, please. I mean, granted that then pushes one of those two models towards further out, which is possibly not what you want, but... Well, it depends on where the, the game falls, I suppose. Again, we've been assuming that it's all going to be around the centre of the pitch. Oh, no, no, but... no, no, no. It's the centre of the pitch for Jim, mm. with three of his team. The the fishermen will scatter to the four winds. I say, that's the thing. If, if everyone ends up running over to one side, though, if all the fishermen go over there, and then, by extension, all of the, the order scrum, I suppose, have to go over that side, then it's only going to make the game. I think the it's going to be a very interesting the game. The difference here is... The, the Harry Benny Fangtooth is me assuming that my opponent will look at the order and think, I want to put Kraken in here. If he decides to completely avoid the whole Kraken thing and just picks, you know, Shark with Salt and Four Strikers or whatever it is, then of course, like, that's where things like uh, Mist come in, that's where things like Grace come in. Where actually the game plan is now send, say, two people round, sort of just ganking people. It'll definitely be an interesting game. It will be. If I'm uh, not too busy running around with the organising, I'm going to come, like, try and pay attention and watch this game because I want to see what, the, what goes on. But. We are nearly at work, so I think that's probably time to call this wind it up. This conversation. I will go. On. So this was actually I realised we didn't announce it this This was cast zero. Oh yeah, episode zero. Episode yeah. zero. So if anyone particularly wants to, to, you can find me on Twitter. I'm at scapegoatsty. So we will say goodbye. And well, you, I, I, we never make a topic for like the discussion on the way home. Well, but there's there's not going to be a second to be a half. Ramble. Yeah. So ah well, the discussion is I've disappeared again. Bye, guys. Goodbye. 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 <laughs>